Welcome to Transmissions. When we introduce ourselves, we usually say our name. The I becomes the name. And usually there is a place where this I lives. Usually there is a profession which this I is. Sometimes it becomes the gender. Sometimes it becomes the relation. I am the son of this and that. I am the wife of this person. Sometimes it becomes the nature of the person. I am angry or I am happy. Sometimes it becomes the intellectual capabilities of the person. I am an artist. I am a writer. I am, a, I am an actor. I am a scientist or engineer. Sometimes it becomes the race, creed or community or even the language groups. For some crazy kind of people, those who are spiritual kind, it becomes some kind of metaphysical entities like I am the soul, multidimensional being of some kind. What is this I that people associate with these various experiences or beliefs? When I say I am sitting, this I is referring to the body actually. The body is sitting and the association is with the body. When I say I am healthy or I am sick or I am sleeping, these associations are with the body. When I introduce myself in the society, the association is with the name, family and profession and so on in the social context. When I am on the spiritual path, the association is with the ego or the mind or any kind of metaphysical entities out there. For those who are called enlightened or self-aware or awakened, the association of the I shifts to pure consciousness that is witnessing all these experiences. This I is also known as the identity or the individual. In fact, when you look at uh, the society, there are as many individuals as there are bodies. So, most commonly, the identity is associated with the body. But it keeps changing as you have just seen. It gets associated with many things. And we can say that the individual is actually uh, some total of these things. The individual is not only a body of a specific kind, the human body of the human animal kind and the individual is also his given name or race or caste or language or his qualifications, his education, his professions, his skills, his intellectual abilities and so on, his spiritual identity and so on. We can combine all these uh, associations and we can say that it is the individual. Now, so far so good, the individual still exists. But uh, let us take a look at this thing called individual, which looks so solid and so real when you are not looking at it. When the association is made with the body, we can see that the body is not the same. It was a one-year-old child, it was then ten-year-old child, then it was twenty-year-old young man or woman, then it became adult and then it became old. The body did not stay. The body that you were associated with is already gone. It is changing second by second. And when I say body, which part of the body am I referring to actually? Which particular organ in the body is me? Because if you cut off one of the limbs or let us say transplant an organ from somewhere else, it is not going to change the eye. The, the 
I persist, the individual persists and we now call, start calling the new body, the new configuration of the body as the same individual who had the same name. The names also keep changing. You can assume any name you want. The profession keeps changing. You can have any skill, any profession. You can master any art. You can master more than one art. The relations, they keep changing, except probably the relation of uh, blood, like your mother and father. But sometimes we get a surprise when our parents tell us that you were adopted and then uh, the, this association of the uh, relation and individual can also break. The attitudes, the nature of the person keeps changing. The emotions, they come and go every second. Even the metaphysical stuff, if you believe in that, keeps changing. It was never the same. And now we see that these dynamic flow of qualities of uh, many many entities and many many concepts is an individual now you can already see that it is becoming fuzzy it is not it is not so solid now you can see it now it is ever changing and it is a collection of concepts and forms which are also changing where is the individual now and you will you can say that okay I can remember what these things are, even if they are changing, then I am that. I can reassociate the individual with the changed uh, qualities, changed entities, and so on. So it boils down to memory. And now you can suspect where we are going with the individual. No memory, no individual. The individual is in the mind, the individual is only a memory. Just like everything else that we have seen in this series so far. The space, the time, the suffering, the physical world. Everything was just memory, just mind. Concepts in the mind. And so is this individual. It is a collection of changing concepts. You will say, no, the body is solid, but we have already seen that Objects are only in the mind. The ob objects exist in the mind as perceptions, as entries in the memory. There is no other object out there. This body is an object, is a changing object and it is illusory. We can immediately see that the concept of individual is twice as removed from reality because the body is just one layer of illusion. But if you add an individual on that layer, it becomes doubly removed from the illusion. If you, the mind is an illusion. The mind is a collection of memorized data. And if you collect them under another concept of an individual, it becomes twice as removed from the reality. So, <laughs> not only the individual is an illusion, it is doubly so. Why do we need this concept? This is the obvious question. What is, what is this activity of the mind achieving? And the answer is very simple. The idea of an individual, this tag of identity on everything this body-mind does ensures the survival of the body-mind. Survival is the biggest need of the body-mind and it has come up with this strategy to collect all the activities, all the processes of this body-mind, which is a collection of many things, actually, and under an identity, under an individual, and it has given it a name also. The second thing is, our society cannot function if there are no individuals. If somebody steals, if somebody murders, whom are you going to blame if there is no individual? So people lock up this body and say that the individual did, did these nasty things and the body suffers because of what the mind did, whatever actions the mind planned. If there is no individual, who is going to eat? Whom are you going to pay? Whom are you going to elect your president? 
the whole society is based on this very elaborate idea of their being an individual our lives are based on this idea of their being an individual so it has become a part of this transactional reality as we call it it has become a part of this relative reality and we simply assume that there is an individual when we look at somebody we see only a body we do not see the individual we infer from the actions voice and the nature of that body there is some something there which is consistent with the past actions of the body although they keep changing but the change so slowly that the mind gets an opportunity to integrate those changes into it its current uh, definition of the individual so even though the individual or this body mind complex keeps changing every day uh, we keep updating our database with the changes for example the person that you knew as your friend was very kind and very loving and very jolly fellow something happened and he turned into a bitter person now he is very angry and almost criminal but you know that he is the same individual you do not say that i don't recognize him but uh, your mind has integrated the new features into the definition of this individual so if you erase the past from your memory you will find that uh, the new individual is totally okay there is no doubt in your mind that there is an individual however this proves that the other individual other other people they are also in our memories they are also an integrated database in our memories you can change the body also let us let us say you can uh, your wife gets a plastic surgery cosmetic surgery and you cannot recognize her now but from her voice or from her uh, attitudes and from her behavior and nature you can easily conclude that she is your wife now your mind will update the data then your mind will uh, add a new face onto this personality the old personality and the life continues with the individual getting updated she is the same individual for you although everything almost everything has changed about that individual we live in this perpetual illusions of there being an individual not only we think that i am this individual which is a changing flow of phenomena we also think that there are other individuals there are other people out there there are also just a flow in this universal mind just a flow in this illusory world and our societies are actually based on this these realities of their being individuals society is three times removed from the reality <laughs> and there is no wonder that it's in bad shape because nobody knows what what's going on everybody is deluded everybody is under the spell of maya and the spell of illusion that is why most of the humanity most of these body mind creatures they are miserable they are unhappy they are ignorant they are fearful and angry their pleasure comes from identification with the individual or identification with this body or some other part of the memory there is no happiness there is no real happiness there is no bliss wherever you look because everybody is deluding themselves they think they are separate they think that that uh, they are in control they are in charge of this individual which is just flowing on the mercy of mother nature on the mercy of these mental processes which the mother nature is only the last kind which i called crazy which i think is the most sane kind of person on this planet a spiritually awakened person compared to him everybody is totally mad an awakened person who knows that there is no individual he is not deluded 
he is totally acting as an individual fully knowing that it is an illusion that gives him the correct sense to act in the society also seeing everybody as not individuals but as this pure consciousness which has taken these forms corrects our behavior automatically we do not need ethics we do not need uh, reward and punishment systems of the society we can act very very naturally seeing that there are no individuals there is just one whole who needs these made up artificial ethics or rules or laws why do we need these artificial constructs in the society because nobody knows what they are everybody thinks that they are individuals look at the individual and it will dissolve if you are not still convinced that there is no individual i have a very nice trick you just start describing the individual and everything about the individual will point to memory locations in your mind everything points to some or other memory individual is a concept in the mind is a collection of many behaviors many things many experiences experiences that are that the mind is integrating into one thing the third thing that uh, convinces us that there is an individual is the brain washing the conditioning that is imposed upon our mind by the society who is deluded the delusion is passed on to the infant uh, your mother will point your body and say that it is you and very early in the childhood the child starts associating the individuality with the body so if the child gets hurt if there is no individual there is just a sensation of pain and the child knows nothing but to cry except crying but then the mother comes and says look at your feet look at your knees it is they are bleeding you fell down and you are hurt and there is association that is formed in the mind of mind of the child and i am this thing which is hurt which is bleeding which is paining as you grow up the society gives you a name the society gives you a caste a race a nationality and all that kind of garbage you are you are a specific kind of gender and you have all these kind of burden some uh, identities your government gives you a passport or identity card now by the age of 20 25 you are totally trapped in this garbage that you call individual it is just garbage in your mind that is stuffed by the society you also point to the other body minds and say that they are individual and you also go to this extent that you blame them for their actions if there is no individual who is acting this is another illusion there is no actor because there is nobody to act the actions are happening the experiences are coming then the mind associate associates the actions of these organisms that it sees experiences into an individual and assigns uh, responsibility an actor to those actions and i am not saying that this is totally useless it is very very useful for survival if you do not know who you are as an individual the body mind won't know whom to feed whom to protect whom to defend and who must reproduce with whom the mother won't take care of the child if she does not see the child as an individual as separate from the environment and the child won't recognize the mother if the child won't see the mother as another individual a special individual who ensures his or her survival and we form groups we form tribes and their function is again survival we are a tribal kind of animal we are a group herd animal and uh, the whole herd takes on an individuality you must have noticed this 
and they attack other groups, other tribes because they are competing for survival with the other tribes. This is the whole drama of society. No doubt, no wonder that these individuals are miserable. They think they are acting. They think that others are acting. They think that their tribes, their groups, their communities, they exist. They think that I exist as this body-mind, as a bunch of memories and experiences. They are insane, actually. The one who has awakened, the one who has realized that there is no individual, he is called enlightened. Because then the light of awareness shines on this activity of the mind. It is discarded, but it is kept as a mechanism for survival. Now the survival is no more a burden because it is being done by this organism. It is not being done by me. If it survives, fine. If it does not, it's okay. Business as usual. Nobody survives here. You will die. If, even if you are an individual, you will die. Even if you see that this thing that died is a part of the whole. A flowing whole which appears on the screen of pure consciousness, pure emptiness. Zero dimensional screen where this play is being played of individuality. Without individuality, there will not be any experience. Individuality is a limitation. And limitation is what that gives us this experience. So the uh, question is now, if there is no individual, should I stop behaving like an individual? Should I kill this thing called the body-mind or something because it's not real? <laughs> this is half enlightenment. This is worse than enlightenment actually. Do not do anything stupid. It is what it is. It is an illusion and it will continue. Even if you have these kind of thoughts, it will continue. It will continue in other forms. So, what we see is that this individuality is actually a gift from this consciousness to, in order to enable this kind of ex experience of uh, limitedness, because I am that consciousness which is infinite. There is no way to know what I am unless I limit myself in a form. And I assume that this form has a life of its own so that it can protect itself, so that it can feed itself and reproduce. This is the trick. You fell for this trick. This is my own trick, but I have forgotten this. I have taken the separate individual, the illusion of the individual as myself and I have forgotten the architect of this individual that is watching silently. I am that watcher actually. I am not the individual. The individual is a means to gain experiences for various times. The individual is an illusion. The individual appears and disappears. I am the one who is witnessing this illusion of individuality, illusion of identity of a person. I was never born. The person was born and it will die because it was born, because it changes. I am that which witnesses this birth and death of this illusory entity, does not last. But the experience never ends. The I stays. The real I is my real nature, which is pure consciousness, the Atman that is witnessing the play of individuality. I am that. Thank you very much for listening. Asitoma.